Hey, this is Brooke Drum with Printerbot.com, and I'm here on a Sunday night, and I want to show you how to change out your Acme rod upgrade. This is a T8 four star two millimeter, uh, really a lot more standard Acme rod than we've been using on these old printers for a while, and it's a really simple change out. Uh, we'll make a mechanical switch uh, with the nut, the Acme rod. And we've got a new coupler that works rather well with this because we've turned down the end on this one. And uh, it's the same one we use in the new simples you see behind me. Uh, but it's really nice. It's fast. You can manually push it up and down, which is something that you can't do right now. So let me show you how to change this out and I'll get right to it. Now, uh, one note, uh, if you have a Super Z, uh, we do have that length for sale available. It's the same nut, same coupler, but it's a taller uh, lead screw. So I'm going to do it once on this. It's the exact same on the Super Z if you have an extended Z. And it's pretty similar in the play as well. I'll, I'll show you that in another video. So let's get started. Now um, this thing is actually made to come off this whole arm. So I've already got it uh, chucked up here. So I'll take this off first. I like to take uh, all but one off on each side. And I know some of this, the focus is kind of weird on this camera, so you're not going to be able to see everything in crystal clear detail, but it shouldn't be too bad. I got a monitor over here I'm, I'm watching, <clears throat> so that's why I'm looking off to the side all the time. So this is uh, these long, these long uh, screws are holding the belt on. I wanted to get that, that done. One more screw, right here, or one on each side. Of course, I choose a drill that's almost out, so I have to run out and grab a new battery. But we're already rolling on this, so this just comes right off, and we'll just lay that aside. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get access to uh, behind here is the nut, so I'm going to have to take this off. And there's a few screws to do that. I still have battery left. That's the clutch on my drill. All right, I gotta go get a new battery. I'll be right back. Okay. <sighs> So, that's much better. So there's a plate that spans, see if you can see it. There's a plate that spans across these two, and uh, it's kind of hard to show the camera. I'll do this at the same time, but I'll give it a shot. See how that came loose? So I like to keep little piles of this. Uh, these little screws are all different. So that's good. That is loose. Now, <clears throat> for the Z-nut. These are longer. Now, technically, I might be able to get that out, but I just want you to see what all is involved here. Okay, so there are some standoffs. You're going to see them fall. Take the belt out. Oh, that's free. There. All right, so we've got, we can take this out if we wanted to. So that's, uh, that's what we got. And then these are the spacers. Where'd the other one go? 
already losing pieces. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, a little bit tricky um, to get that out. But if you just kind of take the whole thing apart. Now, there are instructions online. I'm going to take the Z-coupler out. Let's see if I can get that in focus a little better. There are instructions uh, online when you build this. So it's really the same procedure. You can follow the same procedure, it's just the parts will look a little different. And the instructions are still valid. All right, so that's the old one. Now, uh, one thing about this is you can see that this part is not symmetrical in either direction. So it went on like that. It looks like the shallow side points uh, this direction, and then the shallow side is towards me. So I'm going to do the same thing there. You see that? So I know that it's going to go on like that. Okay. At least I hope. Nope, I'm wrong. Actually, you can see, um, check this out. So if I were to try to put this in this way, the Acme rod wouldn't line up. So make sure your Acme rod lines up. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put the, here's the old one. Got a mess of screws. Look at the new Z coupler. And I'm going to put that on. There's one set screw on the top and one on the bottom. Those go on the flats of the motor. So I'm gonna put that on hand tight. And I can tighten that a little bit later. If I put this on first, at least it ensures I'm doing it the right way. Now, um, I'm gonna leave this bottom one loose because I just, I just wanted to show you how this orients See that? All right. Looking at it one more time here. Okay, there it is. Now, uh, the, the two things that you want to line up are obviously the vertical. Um, so you've got, you know, if I switch it around, it won't fit. And then I'm looking down the, the flat plate here uh, because I know that this bolts up against this flat plate and I want it to be out here. So if it were upside down and backwards, it wouldn't be flush across this area. So that's the main thing. Now the, the pain in the butt on this is actually, let me make sure I got the wires going right here. Looks like I gotta <clears throat> move that down. Okay, the pain in the butt is the wash, the uh, standoffs on the back side of this. So you can see how tight it is in here. It lines up like that. And there's not a lot of room. Alright, so this is actually... I'm just realizing I say actually a lot. Okay, there you go. So the spaces are on the top. So I'm going to have to move that down enough. <clears throat> and then uh, I can put my faceplate on. Now, uh, on the, on the faceplate here, a couple of things. Your bearings are going to go to the outside. Uh, your end stop switch will be at the bottom. This hits it when it comes across. So let me uh, get that motor through the hole. There we go. And I actually think uh, everything's lining up fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts through the bottom because that will hold everything in place. I'll, and I'll tag a couple of these uh, screws in to hold them to the plates. So then everything will be cinched up. And I'll show you what it looks like. So long screws through the bottom. They go into the motor. This will save a little time. Now, in addition to the hardware, 
changing out. You will have to change one setting on your, uh, you know, in an M code. Now I'm not, <clears throat> I'm being careful not to over tighten these because I like to tighten these by hand when I'm done. Because you can't trust a clutch on your drill. They're all different ratings and we'll do different, just lifting that up to line up. They all do different strengths, so I never trust a clutch on a drill. It always is the first step, but not the last. Okay, so you can see how that all uh, goes across there. I've only got a few in, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the rest of these screws, and I'll have to use some needle node suppliers to kind of hold my spacers. Oh, in fact, since I uh, tighten those up, I want to leave those loose. I want the motor to bend back a little bit so that my spacers don't fight me going in. All right. All right, so we'll handle the, the M codes probably just in a, you know, we'll just list the commands. I'm not going to show you on the computer uh, because I just don't think that's that much help. I can see that spacer through the hole there. Just want a few threads. I can tighten that down here in a second. Make sure it's getting purchased in the motor. Yep. This other one, there's even less room. down so that I can get my pliers straight down in there. Of course I drop it. Woo. Take two. Now just to tighten that up a little bit. This is the motor. So you can't really misalign the motor. Okay. Now the, the belt goes in. You can see where the teeth. See how that goes, loops around there like that? Pretty cool. All right, now I can put these long screws in here now if I want just easier access. I shouldn't have to cut any zip ties and redo my belt. There you go. It's not tight yet, but it's, it's there. Okay, looking for these short ones. So they're short. The longer ones go into the Delrin to put the plate on. Okay, one more. Ran out of battery. 
<laughs> All right, well, where was I? All right, so uh, everything's loose, including my set screws down here. So let me start with the set screw on the bottom. I've got that on a flat. I like to do that to make sure it's on the flat. You can kind of see, if you want to see it, see I can see where the flat is. I put it down. I don't want this touching the bottom. And by the way, this is going to mean that you, you want to check your um, calibration after doing this. I mean, we're, we're screwing around with not just the Z axis, but we could have uh, moved something along this lines. And so you're going to want to calibrate your Z height as well. You don't want to scratch this bed. So that this is uh, moving up and down really well. I like to test this. You can even do this. Oh look, I love this. It's rock solid. There's no wobble. Those lathe parts are really nice. Okay, so I better tighten everything up before I button it up. Okay, that's good. 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 I'm doing the parts that go into the block first. And that's the motor. I don't want to over tighten the motor because I don't want to squish that Delrin at all. Nice. Okay. Everything's moving good. So now I can put the plate back on. I'm going to turn it around where I can see it. There's three screws on one side, three screws on the other side. And this is Delrin, and Delrin's a pretty soft material. Uh, we, we use Delrin because A, it's pretty cheap, and it's forgiving. Um, when you push the rods on, you know, it doesn't fight you. To lift up a little bit. So if we had metal, um, we use this. If we had metal on those bar ends, they'd be, you know, they'd either be too hard to get on or they wouldn't be as forgiving. And I do believe it dampens, uh, you know, the transfer of the bearings if there's any noise. But even though this is forgiving material, um, that's also a bad thing, right? If you just crank your screws in there, let's strip them out. So I keep it on a really light clutch on this first step. Yeah, you heard it popping. Now, I don't like to tighten my belt too much because there's a little bit of slack in those bar ends. Um, they're not the perfect length because we want the bars, uh, if they were cut just a little bit off, we don't want it to be all hard. So if I tighten the belt, it would suck in those Delrins, you know, on each other. So now, um, tighten these down by hand. Don't over tighten them. I'm not giving them much at all, just finger tight. In fact, even the first or second, second clutch seemed to be good enough. Yep, it's all good. So everything's tight, everything's back together. Uh, what is it? Less than a 20 minute deal. Now the other thing I want to mention, oh I'll tighten the belts. And all that is, is I feel the belt tension and I tighten one side, then I tighten the other. And I like to get it where that metal plate that's pulling on the belt is parallel. You can kind of see it's not quite parallel right now. There you go. So, there it is, the new Acme lead screw. So, 